good day grade tens in this June exam revision lesson we're going to be looking at functions and we're going to be looking at all the functions so this lesson is a little bit long um, so take it slowly and do it in bits if you need to and um, we're looking at all the functions that we've covered so far again this is a revision of lesson so if you don't understand exactly what I'm talking about feel free to go back to the weeks where we cover functions and go through the videos again so the first one we're looking at are straight line graphs and to cover it all I've decided just to show you this question where it says for the function the diagram below give the equation of the line for a of x b of x p of x and d of x so let's have a look first of all let's look for a of x so a of x is this line here okay a of x where it goes through the y-axis at naught 3 and the x-axis at 4 naught. So the equation of a straight line is y is equal to mx plus c where m is your gradient and c is your y-intercept and I'm really hoping you guys know that in your sleep already but let's carry on. So we know therefore that it's going through the y-value or the y-intercept is 3 so we can go that y is equal to mx plus 3. Okay, now there are a couple ways we can do to find out what the gradient is, but the easiest way now is just to substitute in this value here of 4 naught. So when x is 4, y is naught. So we've got y is naught is equal to m times 4 plus 3. And let's solve for m. So we've got minus 3 is equal to 4m. Here for m, equals minus 3 over 4. Therefore the equation a of x is minus 3 over 4 x plus 3. Okay, so now we've got the equation for a of x. Let's do the next one which is b of x. Okay, so b of x is this line here and again we've got the x intercept and the y-intercept so it's nice and easy for us so again we've got y is equal to and the y-intercept is minus x so we've got mx minus 6 okay there we go and we need the gradient again so we can just substitute in this point again makes life very easy so we've got when x is 4 y is naught so we've got naught is equal to 4m minus 6 so if we've got minus 6 is equal to 4m, so m is going to be minus 6 over 4, which then comes to minus 3 over 2 equals m. And that is incorrect because when you take the minus across, it becomes a plus. So it becomes 3 over 2. And how do I know that? Because this is going up to the right, which means it's got a positive gradient. So the equation for b is going to be 3 over 2x minus 6. 3 over 2 x minus 6. Let's look at p of x now. p of x is a straight line going across. Let's just change color. So p of x is a straight line going across and it cuts the y-axis at naught 3. So let's think about this. If that's going across, when x is 1, y is 3. When x is 4, y is 3. So do you see that the whole way along here, we have a specific value which says that y equals 3. And that is the equation for p of x, just y equals 3, because everywhere along here, the y value is going to be 3. Finally, we're going to look at d of x. Now d of x is special because it is parallel with a of x, which means it has the same gradient of a of x. So a of x, if we look at it, was minus 3 quarters. So if we had to write this again, let's do this. So we're doing d of x is going to be mx plus c, but the gradient is the same as a of x because it is parallel so it's going to be minus 3 over 4x plus c but also what's special about d is it goes through the origins therefore the y intercept is 0 so therefore it's just minus 3 over 4x and there you go that's straight line graphs let's move on to the next function parabolas it says draw the graph of the function y is equal to minus x squared plus 4 showing all intercepts with the axes Okay, so first thing we've got to do is we've got 
to draw our axes. Now remember grade tens, like I said, I don't have facility of rulers and pencils and erasers. So mine might be slightly skewed. However, you guys don't have that excuse. So now it says draw the graph of the function y is equal to minus x squared plus four. Now remember that your functions of your parabolas at the moment are y is equal to ax squared plus bx plus c or it just could be a squared plus c plus or minus c but the thing is that a tells you your amplitude and c tells you your y-axis your y-intercept so we know it goes through positive 4 so it goes through positive 4 we also know that the a it tells us if it's a positive or negative graph and if it's a positive graph then it's a happy graph and if it's a negative graph, then it's a sad graph. Okay, it's a silly way to remember it. I mean, silly thing to say, but it's easy to remember. And if it doesn't have a middle term, it means that it's centered across the axis, the y-axis. So therefore, I can immediately draw this graph to look like this. Okay, and now all I have to do is solve for these two points here. Okay, so do you agree that at these points y equals naught? So we've got naught is equal to minus x squared plus 4. Okay, now I know that a lot of you are very tempted to therefore go, okay, well this is easy, minus 4 is equal to x squared, minus x squared, therefore 4 equals x squared, therefore x equals 2, which is true, but you've forgotten one of your roots because x is 2 but there's another root sitting over here so a better way to do this is to actually do it like you would a difference of two squares okay so you've got naught is equal to minus x squared plus 4 let's divide everything by the minus so you've got naught is equal to x squared minus 4 then you can see you've got the difference of two squares so you've got x minus 2 x plus 2 equals naught Therefore, x equals 2 or x equals minus 2. I'm very happy for you to use this method. If you remember that x equals plus or minus the square root of 4 and therefore it equals plus or minus 2. If you can remember that, then go for it. Otherwise, do this method because it's much safer and you will get both of your roots out. And there you go. That is your parabola. Let's look at the next function. Hyperbola. It says draw the graph of xy equals minus 6. xy equals minus 6. Another way to write this is y is equal to minus 6 over x. Okay, now one of the easiest ways to do this is to use a table. So let's draw an x and a y table. Okay, so when x is minus 6, do you agree that y is 1? When x is minus 3, y is going to be 2. When x is minus 1, or minus 2, shall I say, y is, I'm just looking at the factors of 6, by the way, in case you're wondering what I was doing. I'm just looking at what number's going here, because I want to be able to plot this graph. So when x is minus 2, y is going to be 3. And when x is minus 1, y is going to be 6. But there's a whole other quadrant. When x is 1, y is going to be minus 6. When x is 2, y is going to be minus 3. You get the gist. When x is 3, y is going to be minus 2. And when x is 6, y is going to be minus 1. And then all we have to do is plot them. So what have we got? When x is minus 6, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 y is minus is 1 when x is minus 3 1 2 3 y is 2 when x is minus 2 y is 3 and when x is minus 1 y is 6 1 2 3 4 5 6 so you can see that it goes up like that okay and then obviously we should assume that the other one is going to be in this quadrant and I'll talk to you about how to know what quadrants there are in a minute. When x is 1, y is minus 6, minus 1, minus 2, minus 3, minus 4, minus 5, minus 6. When x is 2, y is minus 3, 1, 2, 3. When x is 3, y is minus 2 and it's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. There we go. And we 
try and follow the lines. Guys, remember, you guys don't have to do something like this, horrible like this, because you have an eraser. Okay, so what did we realize? We realized that unless they give us restrictions, in other words, unless they tell us only to draw in one quadrant or whatever, your right, purple is always going to have a pair. And if it's a negative pair, it's going to be in the second and the fourth quadrant, okay? In other words, if I count this as one, two, three, and four, then it's the second and fourth quadrant. If it's a positive, then I would find it obviously in the first and third quadrants. Why? Because both X and Y are positive here, and both X and Y are negative here. So obviously then they would make a positive graph, okay? So if you see X, Y equals a negative, we're looking at this quadrant and this quadrant, whereas if we are looking at a positive, then it's the top right and the bottom left quadrants. Okay, and the easiest way to draw hyperbolus is, yes, just to draw a table and plot the points. Okay, but make it look much neater than this because you have a new use of a razor and a pencil. If I see a graph like this in the exams, I actually circle it and I mark it down. So please don't draw your graphs like this. Right. Right, so now the graph says draw the graph g of x is equal to 8 of x minus um, 8 of x plus 3, showing asymptotes, axis symmetry, and the coordinates of one point on the graph. Okay, so let's have a look at this. Let us again use a table. So we've got x values and we've got y values. And again, I'm going to look at the factors that go into 8. So let's start with minus 8. If x is minus 8, we've got 8 divided by minus 8 is minus 1. But now we're adding 3, so it becomes 2. If x is minus 4, okay, then y becomes minus 2 plus 3, which is 1. Okay. If x is minus 2, we end up with minus If x, <laughs> um, yeah, if x is my okay, sorry. If x is minus two, we've got eight divided by minus two, which is plus. Um, sorry, it's minus four plus three is minus one. And if x is minus one, we get eight divided by minus one is minus eight plus three is minus five. Now let's do positive numbers. If x is one. We've got 8 plus 3, which is going to be 11. If x is 2, we've got 4 plus 3, which is 7. If x is 3, I mean, if x is 4, we've got 8 divided by 4 is 2 plus 3 is 5. And if x is 8, we've got 1 plus 3, which is 4. Right, so let's plot these points. And I'm going to make every second one be a 2. So when x is minus 8, y is 2. So minus 8, minus 2, minus 4, minus 6, minus 8, y is 2. When x is minus 4, 1, 2, y is 1. When x is minus 2, y is minus 1. Okay, and when x is minus 1, y is minus 5. So it's minus 2, minus 4, minus 5. So we have a line going through like that. So now let's plot the second half. When x is 1, y is 11. So when x is 1, y is 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 11. When x is 2, y is 7. So when x is 2, y is 7. So it's 2, 4, 6, 7, when x is 4, so it's 2, 4, y is going to be 5, so it's 2, 4, 5, and when x is 8, y is 4, so it's going to be 2, 4, 6, 8, and y is 4, so there we go. So do you see that this graph, and again I apologize for my bad drawing, this graph does not cut the y-axis at all, okay? So therefore, one of the asymptotes is going to be that x equals naught. But you see that it does cut the y-axis, okay? It does cut the y-axis, I mean the x-axis. So therefore, we can say that it is definitely not the y, the x-axis is not an asymptote. But 
normally it is but we've added 3 so we have to go up so therefore y equals 3 is our other asymptotes so now we've got our asymptotes okay now it says draw the axis symmetry and the coordinates of one point on the graph well it really doesn't matter what coordinate you want it to draw it can be any one you can label it so why don't we just go well actually this is minus 8 2 it really doesn't matter and your axis symmetry is what? Your axis symmetry would be basically normally with this, the axis symmetry is going to be y equals x, but this time it is going to have to go through the positive 3 value. So it is going through the positive 3 value and then it has to go through the midpoint of this. Okay, so what do you want to do? You want to look for the square root of 8 the square root of 8. So basically you've got your axis of symmetry is either going to be this line here or actually in fact yeah axis of symmetry or it is going to be this line yeah okay so this point here is going to be y is equal to mx plus 3 and similarly this is going to be y is equal to mx plus 3 okay so you want a gradient that is going to work for this but it's going through plus 3 because that is our asymptote okay so the way we do this is because normally it will be going through 0 but now it's going to be going through plus 3 so to find this gradient it is very easy you just want y is equal to x plus 3 and y is equal to minus x plus 3 and that's how you draw your graph let's do one final function it says draw the graphs of y equals 2 to the x and y is equal to half to the x on the same set of axes. So these are exponential graphs, okay? So it says draw the graphs of y equals 2 to the x and y is equal to half to the x. So again, let's plot some points. We're going to go y is equal to 2 to the x and we're going to let x, and we're going to do x and we're going to go y. Okay, if x is 1, y is 2. If x is 2, y is 4. Okay, if x is 3, y is 8, because 2 to the power of 3 is 8. If x is minus 1, y is a half. If x is minus 2, you've got 2 to the power of minus 2, which is a quarter. Okay, so let's plot those points. When x is 1, y is 2. When x is 2, y is 4, 2, 4. When x is 3, y is 8, 2, 4, 6, 8. When x is minus 1, y is a half, which is over here. When x is minus 2, y is a quarter. And what is anything to the naught? It is 1. So therefore, this is y is equal to 2 to the x. And it goes through always through the value of 1. That's supposed to be a 1. And this is y is equal to 2 to the x. Now let's do this graph here and we're changing colors. So now we've got y equals a half to the power of x. Okay, so again let's plot some points. If x is 1, y is going to be a half. If x is 2, y is going to be a quarter. Okay, because half to the power of 2 is a quarter. If x is naught, y is 1. Okay, if x is minus 1, what have we got? We've got a half to the power of minus 1, which is the same as 2 to the negative 1 to the power of negative 1, which is therefore 2. And if x is minus 2, y is 4. So let's plot that. If x is 1, we've got a half. If x is half, if x is 2, oopsie, that's on that side, half, and that's a quarter. If x is naught, y is 1. If x is minus 1, y is 2. And if x is minus 2, y is 4. So actually, these two graphs are mirror images of each other about the y-axis. So the y is equal to half to the power of x. And that makes sense why? Because this can be rewritten, the half to the power of x could be written as 2 to the negative 1 to the power of x, which can be written as 2 to the negative x. So what are we doing? We're saying whatever 
x value is, this is going to be the negative x value. And there you go, grade 11, this is, I mean grade 10, this is your revision of your functions. Please, if you don't understand what we did here, go and look at the function, um, function videos in the different weeks and go and make sure you understand. Have a great day.